Welcome, everybody, to the Red Zone Report, brought to you by the Casos Pizza on the Built in Buffalo YouTube, X, and Facebook pages. Welcome to the show. I don't live in Buffalo, but when I go, I get Picasso's. Welcome, everybody, to the Red Zone Report right here on the Built in Buffalo YouTube, Facebook, and X platforms. You can catch us every day of the week, just about. We have a show. Some shows may be for you, some may not, but I hope you enjoy all of it. Now, today I have a fellow Built in Buffalo member who is here to do the show with me today. We were supposed to go Friday, but we didn't get a chance to go do that. So we are back on today. Scott Kaysen, welcome to the show. What's up, Izzy? Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. You know, uh, Friday was supposed to be the thing, but, you know, it's all good. I, we, we, we make time no matter when it comes. So uh, just, you know, this show is fairly interactive. I, I, I dig talking to the fans. Uh, Daniel Gari is the usual guy here. Uh, welcome back, Daniel. I enjoy the show. But, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about the state of the defense, right? What, yeah, uh, so – yeah, um, a lot of moves on the defense this past yeah. offseason. A lot of familiar faces gone. A lot of new faces in. Got younger. Got cheaper. Uh, hopefully, that's a good thing. Uh, more to add to the defense this upcoming weekend in the draft, I would imagine. But yeah, going to talk about where it stands right now. Kind of what we're looking like, and you know, our our thoughts on everything. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a uh, you know, a lot of the old guys or older guys. I'm going to call them old because they're younger than me. Obviously, I'm. 39, so Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, while in football terms they're old, uh, they're not in reality. So, yeah, you know, those guys being let go and for Micah Hyde potentially retiring, his contract expiring, uh, you know, Poe going to the, the, the Dolphins in free agency, which he wanted to live in Florida anyway. So, you know, good luck to you, Poe, uh, except for when you play us or, you know, in general for the season. Don't get hurt, but hope you lose every game. Um, it's the Dolphins, I don't care. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, Ty- Tyrell Dodson, you know, he's out of the building. Uh, but we did, we did bring back some familiar faces, and then we, you know, brought in some new ones. So what do you think about these guys that we brought in? Yeah, I, th- the Bills had to get younger in some capacity. I was surprised that Poyer got hurt, or excuse me, that Poyer got let go. Um, Micah Hyde, he kind of knew they weren't bringing back, even though it seems like there's some rumors out there that he might be coming back on a, a one year deal. Kind of surprised me. Felt like after the neck injury two years ago, he was on his way out. But yeah, I'm interested to, to see some guys we brought in. You know, we brought in a safety, Mike Edwards, who got played some pretty, pretty good amount of snaps last year with Kansas City. Picked off Josh actually in our regular season game against him. So be kind of his first time in a full starting role. Um, has shown some flashes. Let's see uh, what he can do in you know the, the full starting capacity. But that is one thing Sean McDermott is really, really good at. He finds safeties that he sees some stuff on film, maybe haven't put it all together yet, and then turns them into all pro players with Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. Neither one of them were anything special coming into Buffalo and look at what they did. Um, they beefed up the D line a little bit, brought back KJ Epinesa, obviously, Dequan Jones is back, brought in a couple other big guys in the middle to kind of make that not as much of a draft need like we thought it might be a couple weeks ago. Uh, linebacker, mostly the same crew coming back now that Milano is healthy. So uh, I think the defense is in a better spot than some people might think and really Agreed. just up to some guys to take their opportunity and run with it is really what it comes down to. Yeah, I agree with just about everything you said right there. You know, um, the, the Micah Hyde thing, I think that he was at the door. Um, 
I've heard some rumors too about him potentially coming back. Maybe if someone gets hurt and they need a safety, he'll come back or something like that. I don't know how true those are, but you know, uh, I would welcome him back if there was an injury to one of our guys. You know, just you know, have a familiar face in the building, and you know, I, I do hope he retires though. Like that injury scared the hell out of me. Yeah. You know, with, with my disability. And my injury is going through military service. This guy goes through a car crash every time someone says hut. So, you know, that's that's a whole different thing. I think that's even worse than the type of injuries that I went through with, with my military service. That Micah Hyde, you know, just the, those neck stingers, they get scary. They get worse every time. Yeah, that's – your spine is just something you shouldn't mess around with. And it was a minor miracle that he came back this past season and played at all. And then, yeah, he missed a couple games with those stingers, and I don't think that's something that's going to get better as he gets older. So, yeah, probably time for him to hang it up. If he does come back and play, you know, give him – he's not going to start, you know, safety, like backup safety role, maybe more of like that veteran presence in the locker room. But, yeah, I wouldn't count on it. Uh, another guy who's going to be gone, which is going to be a little weird not seeing him out there, Trey White, uh, unfortunately yeah. a, a salary cap casualty. Uh, freeing up about 10 mil, which should come in real handy come summertime when the Bills need to round out the roster. Going to be weird not seeing him in a Bills uniform. He was kind of that first, along with Deion Dawkins, that first kind of like changed the culture kind of guy that came in with, with McDermott, started turning things around. They went to the playoffs his rookie year. Fan favorite, obviously, a lot of fun to watch. Um, wish the best for him in L.A. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, injuries kind of derailed his time in Buffalo, but – Going to be weird not seeing him in Buffalo. I feel good about the corners we have. Um, Rasul Douglas played great when he came over. Christian Benford's been a gem of a six-round pick. And then they still have Kair Alam. We'll see. First-round pick has all the has all the talent, been figuring out the system. Uh, maybe he can be, like, a better depth guy. And then they still have, you know, Cam Lewis, Jamarcus Ingram floating around. And I would imagine they bring in another corner at, at some point, whether that's in the draft or kind of a depth guy. But, yeah, Trey, Trey not being there is going to be weird. They, they, yeah, Trey is, uh, as you see, Trey's a, a real big, like, I love Trey White. And, you yeah. know, I, I hated seeing him go, but I understood why, so it didn't bother me so much. I saw it coming. I was calling it throughout the whole offseason. People were telling me I was crazy. Like, they're not going to let go of Trey and, you know, eat that, you know, $6 million. And I was like, dude, did they, if they do it post-June 1, it's a lot more money saved. Like, yeah, there's yeah. a little bit more that they pay next year. But they save a lot more this year. Like that's a no-brainer to me. You know, he's coming off two major injuries, and I hate to see him go. I'd love to see him recover and do great here in Buffalo. But like, it's it's tough, you know, to to, to count on that, especially when you know you're trying to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, yeah. being sympathetic and empathetic towards a person and, and what they're going through, and then also trying to achieve your goals is very difficult. And so I hope he does great in LA. I you know. If we see him in the Super Bowl, I hope he loses. You know, just, but, but I'm, you know, I wish him the best. And if he does great in that one year contract over there in LA and he's healthy, I, you know, I welcome him back at his, you know, age 30. I'd take him back for a year or two. He, he's such a good influence. You know, he's a, he's, yeah. a, he's also a guy who keeps the mood up. You know, during the injuries, he didn't look like himself. He didn't seem like the Trey White that we know and love. He seemed dejected at times. And yeah. Was just, Which was, Hard to see. Kind of, it, kind of the worst part of when he got hurt. He was finally back to playing Trey White level of football. Like in week three, he had a pick. And then he was, you know, locking up Ty. The play he got hurt on, he locked up Tyreek Hill. Like he seemed to be back having fun. He seemed to be back to playing like a true number one corner. And then just, you know, a turf monster got him and bang, like there's an Achilles. So uh, unfortunate for him. But, yeah, it was probably, like you said, t- time to move on. Time to, you know get a little younger at that position, get a little bit more cap space, and then, you know, give him a, a chance to start fresh somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, just all, all, you know, love prayers and, and luck to Trey White in L.A. You know, good for you for getting a contract. He, my man in the comments over here, Roy said, oh, that's Miss Nancy. Hey, Miss Nancy, that's Lance's mom. <laughs> uh, Roy, uh, you know, White did a nice job getting a nice contract out there in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got, what, you got $8 million? As a eight million dollars for one year. Yeah, look, go yeah. out there and prove it. You know, and if you can't prove it, you still got eight mil for this year and and whatever we already paid him. Yeah, so like you know, 
congratulations on to him getting that contract. But yeah, the the, the whole no fly zone that we had going on with Trey Poe and and Micah Hyde going, you know, eventually all good things come to an end. That's just yeah, what yeah. it is. So I'm. Um, I wish him all luck. Micah Hyde in life. Do he's still doing the softball game? Awesome. Uh, and then uh, you know Poe in Miami. Uh, you know they they suck. So cool. And then uh, Trey out in L.A. You know, good luck to those guys. But the youth that we brought in, I like. You know, Taylor Rapp. As the season went on last year, he improved. He got better oh, yeah. as the year went on. Not so good at the beginning of the year. This is pretty rough. But as it went on. Got to admit, the kid, he picked up the defense. He was helping Razul Douglas pick up yeah, the defense. Yeah. He, to me, he's he's the, the typical strong safety that McDermott likes. If you look back in uh, in um, Philadelphia when he was there, McDermott did the same thing with no-name safeties. Guys drafted in the fifth, sixth, seventh round and made them look good, like Quentin Michael, you know, playing with yep. Brian Dawkins. You know, Brian Dawkins is that hitter. That Taylor Rapp is is just, Taylor Rapp's like a like a really poor man's Brian Dawkins, you know. But still, the the type of player he is fits the mold of what McDermott likes at strong safety. And then Mike Edwards was probably the best player at safety in that Super Bowl last year. And I don't mean like the best rostered player. Like Ufanga is definitely a better safety. But in that Super Bowl, Mike Edwards played the best. Yeah, yeah, he played really well. And Taylor Rapp, like you were saying, he's that safety that McDermott loves. He can play at the traditional safety position. He can come down in the box when he needs to. He can line up over a slot receiver. He can line up over a tight end. He's very, very versatile, which kind of the role that Jordan Poyer has been playing for the last seven years. Uh, I'm excited to see what, what he can do. It's also like he struggled in the beginning of the season, but it, it's tough to find your rhythm when you're used to starting. He started in LA for, I think, the whole time he was there. Come yeah. to Buffalo, you're kind of like you know, like fitting in where you get in, like not getting full starters reps. Like it's tough to find that rhythm. Um, so I'm really hoping that he, you know, takes even another step forward next season when he's playing every snap. He's playing every day. He's getting the reps with the ones in practice. He's getting a lot more comfortable with who he's playing with. Um, so I'm interested to see kind of the, even the next step that he can take uh, next season. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Here's the crazy thing about the defense, right, is that other than safety and corner, it's – Pretty much the same thing. Milano yeah. and, and, and Bernard starters. Yep. Back, right. The the backups may have changed a little bit. Your backup to Matt Milano is clearly going to be Dorian Williams, who seems to progress as well last year. And yeah. then yeah. you brought in Nick Morrow to back up Bernard. You brought in yep. another middle yep. linebacker who started what twelve games last year, I think it was for the Eagles. Yeah, he he was the the green dot. He wore the green dot for the Eagles last year. He was the middle linebacker, so you brought in another middle linebacker, a true middle linebacker. Then, you know, we extended Taron Johnson, so he's going to be here. Yep. Uh, Christian Benford started all last year. Gazul Douglas started most of the year after Trey White got hurt and we, you know, traded for him. And then you got the whole defensive line basically back. Greg Rousseau, yeah. AJ Pessa, Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver. So the state of the defense isn't, like you said, it's not a, like a state of decay or anything like that. Like they, they cut off some of the older pieces and yep. brought in some youth and the draft is still coming. You can see some more injection of youth at certain places, like defensive tackle, defensive end, safety. Yeah. Uh, maybe late round corner, like they always do, and you know, roll with it. Yeah, it's going to look a little different week one, but when you really look at like all the guys that are out there, like you said, it's not that much different. Like the like two new starting safeties, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. Other than Milano being hurt, the same front seven, the little front six and a half that we run kind of with Taron Johnson as a linebacker slot guy. Um, we do a lot of halves, don't we? 11 and a half, yeah. front row, six and a half, front six and a half. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're creative, uh, definitely yeah. creative. Um, the D-line, yeah, all, all the main guys are back. Von Miller, another year off in ACL. Actually started to look kind of good in the playoffs last season. I don't think we're getting prime Von Miller back, but if we can get serviceable Von Miller, Greg Rousseau takes another step forward in his fourth year. Ed Oliver keeps being at Oliver. Daquan stays playing like how he's been playing. Like, mm -hmm. I think our defense could be in a, a pretty good spot next season. Like, I don't, I don't think it's as like that's the question I've been getting. So I live, I don't live in Buffalo either. I'm in Baltimore. That's the question everybody asks: is like, what are you guys going to do? You let all those guys go, and just keep saying like, I don't think it's going to make as big of a difference as everybody thinks it will. Like, if you, if you look at it, like, we only lost one guy who was going to for sure start this upcoming season, and that's Jordan Poyer. And he, even he, like you said, older on his way out. Like, 
I, I don't think the defense is in trouble at all. It'll it'll be interesting to see how they gel together, but like I think we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I agree. And you know the again, what what Bean did basically was hedge his bets on positions. Like, oh, we, we lost Poirier, we lost Hyde, we lost Trey White. Okay, cool. Well, we'll just go ahead and sign some players who can fit in, even if it's just for a year. And then we can replenish later. But we we have serviceable guys. These guys can play. This guy started in the Super Bowl and played excellently. He started most of the year last year with Kansas City, if not the whole year with Kansas City. Yep. And kicked ass. Taylor Rapp came in and he won us some games, like that Dolphins game where he had that game winning interception. Yeah, game winning pick. Like these guys are coming through in the clutch for their prospective teams, whether it was our team or somebody else. And Taylor Rapp won a Super Bowl as a starting safety for the Rams. Yep. So. We're not bringing in chumps here. We're bringing in guys who can play the game. And so I'm really looking forward to to all that. Uh, my man John Roberts says Milano is still rehabbing. He is still rehabbing, but he should be ready, I believe, for training camp. Yeah, they, they, said he's, yeah they, said, they said he's on track to be a full go for camp. Um, he's been in the facility rehabbing, uh, yeah. what I heard as well. He, like... I, I don't know. It's Because Matt Milano, I've said since, I think, 2019 – um, not anywhere public, so no one can fact check me. You just have to believe me that <laughs> Matt Milano is our best defensive player. Missing him, la- mine too. Missing yeah. him last year was huge. And yeah, like um, Terrell Bernard played great in his first year starting, and then Terrell Dodson played out of his mind in f- playing, filling in for him. But just like that kind of like alpha that Matt Milano is, I think they really miss, especially uh, in the playoffs against the Chiefs when it comes to guarding Travis Kelsey, because that's usually the the role that he you know takes on there so Milano having Milano back I think is going to help um help that defense a ton that a lot of people are forgetting and he wasn't there last year after week five yeah absolutely Matt, Matt Milano he's both my favorite and least favorite player because he's too handsome and my wife, my <laughs> yeah wife, him. it's like all right I get yeah, it. That, that damn olive skin yeah but just beautiful man all right, we have no replacement for Floyd, last year's leading pass rusher. That's a big deal for a team that struggles as it uh, as it is getting a good pass rush in the postseason. Well, I mean, he did he did have he did play very well for us, and good luck to him in San Francisco. I, I actually like the Niners; it's like my second favorite team since forever. But um, he kind of fizzled as the season went on last year. Yeah, we needed him the most in the playoffs. So it didn't happen. And so, you know, I, I do yeah. understand it. And I think that we could draft one in the first four rounds. But. The, yeah. And, and Epinesa was was banged up at the end last year, too. Um, so he'll help, you know, being fully healthy, have another year under his belt. Greg Rousseau going to have to take a step forward because he's getting in the time. After this season, if he has a good year this year, we probably extend him. So, he, you know, he's playing for a contract. He should step up and fill that. Von Miller, not saying again. I'll say again. He's not going back to prime Von Miller, but he should be, you know, full healthy, full go, full off season of training. Like I, I don't think that we're gonna get ten sacks from one guy like yeah. Floyd had last season, but I, I think we can make up with that as a communal effort um, on the on the defensive line. And there was never a chance that Floyd was coming back. He even said like he's gonna go whoever gives him the best contract. He was pretty open about that. So as soon as the season ended, I was pretty pretty confident that he he was walking out the door it's true yeah um i mean i get it and i, and I think that we'll take one you know later in the draft maybe the middle of the draft I, fourth fifth round gets just there's some quality guys that should be there um but i like i like the the core guys that we have i think that there's definitely room for some youth some younger guys I'm seeing some uh, some Rousseau talk. Do not extend Rousseau twenty million for an edge who best is against the run. I mean, I, I get that. I I can see them definitely if this year they choose to um, not take that fifth year option and he blows up, then fine. But he's yeah, he's, he's not to prove some, I guess. Yeah, I would imagine they pick up the fifth year option. He, he's a we're not gonna most likely not gonna get anybody better than that and. If there was, it'd probably be at, at around the same number as his fifth-year option would be. So I, I would venture to guess they pick that up. And then who knows, maybe if asked to do more as a pass rusher this season with no Floyd, like we've said, he'll, he'll be able to. But, yeah, b- big year coming up for Russo for sure. Yeah, this is uh, this is his proven year. This is, what, his third year? 
Or is this his fourth year? Uh, this will be his fourth. His fourth year, okay. So. Yeah. Last year, a bit disappointing with only five sacks, but he's been he's been banged up a little bit too. Granted, yeah, he's not a every good year he's dealt with, every year he's dealt with something. It's never major, but he'll like miss a game here, a game there. So that'd be another thing, you know. Best best ability is availability. So exactly. if, he, if he can, you know, stay healthy for a full season, that that'd definitely help as well. Let me see what his uh, fifth year option is. Uh, so his fifth year option would be thirteen million dollars. So yeah, I can yeah. see. I'll pick that up. Yeah, especially if the cap goes up by another fifty mil, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cap's going to keep going up because of the, that Amazon and Disney money, you know. That's right. Amazon's getting what they pay for, I guess, because they're, they're <laughs> biggest dog shit games over there. Pardon my French. Um. All right. So, uh, next thing on the list is uh, Coach Bobby Babbage, defensive coordinator. Uh, he's not the only coaching change on the defense, but he is the major one. Sean McDermott relieving himself of defensive coordinator duties, going back to be the head coach, probably still calling the defense sometimes with Bobby Babbage, but also bringing in some coaches from the University of Miami to be our safeties coach. Yep. A lot of turnover on the defense. What do you think? I'm excited to see what Bobby Babbage can do as the D.C. Uh, kind of every position group he's coached for us, like he's kind of turned to gold, so to say. You know, he was the safeties coach and helped develop Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. And then he became the linebackers coach and helped turn Matt Milano into what he is, Terrell Bernard, Terrell Dodson, all those guys. And then another thing I think it does is just take a really big chunk off of Sean McDermott's plate. Um, definitely at times last year, it seemed like things were a little unorganized, especially, you know, during the games. Like I can think of, you know, 12 men on the field, taking timeouts on defense when things weren't quite organized and, some of that could be to McDermott has a million things going on and, you know, he has to be the head coach, has to be the defensive coordinator. Can't imagine how difficult that is and not necessarily having somebody else there to, to run the defense at practice, to run the defense during the game. So McDermott can just focus on head coaching duties. Uh, I think Babich is going to help a ton in, in just that before anything X's and O's just to have another guy in there to help some, take some of that off of uh, McDermott's plate. It's going to be huge. And, you know, hopefully we see a lot less, like mental errors and unorganizational errors on that defense next year. Yeah. I agree because Sean McDermott with head coaching and then defensive coordinating, that's tough. It's a lot. But the defense was still good even though we had all those injuries. Yeah. Some, yeah, uh, defense was – But they still were, what, top five, top ten? Yeah, which is about what a McDermott defense is going to be for you every year. Like, he, I think people forget – based on some of the playoff success we haven't had, how good of a defensive mind McDermott really is and how he gets so much out of guys who just haven't shown as much before or after they left, after they leave. So every year I'm confident that our defense is going to, going to show up. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe need to tighten up a little bit in the playoffs, but you know, like, like everybody knows you're playing tougher teams in the playoffs, but yeah, like McDermott defense is going to be good year, <clears throat> excuse me, year in, year out. And, Having Babbage in fully as the DC, I think, can only elevate us, you know, in that in that capacity. Yeah, and uh, my man John Roberts, uh, he spelled Babbage wrong, but uh, I think he spelled it like the former game like, like, I can't stop bot. Or like, yeah, or cab, yeah, cabbage with a B. So uh, Bobby Babbage, he uh, he does seem to improve players. Like he was the safeties coach, right? Jordan Poy and Micah Hyde, both all pro players, yep. both Pro Bowl players. He moves to linebackers. Tremaine Evans becomes a Pro Bowl player. Matt Milano becomes an All Pro and Pro Bowl player. He then now he's taking over the whole defense. So it makes sense to pick a, one of your coaches to move up if their effect on the players that they coach directly all improve. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just poking funny, man. You know, I love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see. Um... I think he's going to have a good – like he said, every position group he's played with plays a lot better and just, you know, take some things off McDermott's plate, make things a little bit easier, a little bit more organized, a little more – and the way Les Leslie Frazier left in, what, July, like a couple weeks before camp, like that's weird. You go yeah. through a whole off season thinking that, you know, this is the way it's going to be, this is our guy, and then all of a sudden it isn't anymore. That, that, that's tough. So this year we had a whole off season of normalcy, I'll say. And then they can, you know, go into the season. He has input in all the players he wants and the draft and free agency, all that stuff. So um, ready to rock and roll when camp comes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that uh, that new secondary coach that's going to be out there 
You think we're gonna end up running more men? I I kind of doubt it because McDermott's just such a zone guy, and it, and it's gone pretty well. Uh, and it's tough to run man in the NFL these days, just so it's like how good some of these receivers are getting. Um, maybe so. I'm excited to see he did. He turned out quite a few NFL guys at Miami. I know he yeah. has some NFL experience too. Um, I don't know if they'll play a bunch more man because it seems to be you know even if we have a defensive coordinator at the end of the day, McDermott still has the final say on everything. Well, um, I'm not say like we switched mostly to a man style defense, but like there's more instances of man coverage within it. Like if our man coverage percentage is like twenty percent, you think we may maybe move to like 30, 35? So it's it's po- it's possible, you know, definitely he's, he's a man coverage guy. Yeah, no, that that is yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, with him coming in, but who knows? Maybe they want to, you know, show a little bit of different stuff, put a little different things out there. So yeah, I, I think it's possible we could we could raise it up, but I still be hard to imagine the McDermott defense not being primarily his own scheme. Yeah, it, it, you know, it'll definitely be primarily his own. I don't I don't see a lot of head coaches who are offensive or defensive varying too much from the system that they're used to on their yeah. side of the ball. Like when Rex Ryan showed up and was like, "All right, Mario Williams, you're now a linebacker." And you're like, "What the? What did you say?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're you're yeah. dropping back in coverage twenty five percent of the time. Like, uh, John, I okay. do not know. I do not know about that until we draft uh, Kitchens or uh, Williams from Miami, but I don't think so as of yet. All right, so we mix so much of the players that are injured. We sometimes neglect the talent still on on the field. Even injured, we typically field an equal or more talented defensive group than the opposing team. I don't know how true that is because I've seen some of these guys before they get to Buffalo and they don't play good. Then they come to Buffalo, they play good, then they go elsewhere and they don't play so good again. Or some of them end up, you know, improving in Buffalo and then going somewhere and then playing well after. But the improvement point is definitely when they arrive in Buffalo. So I don't know if it's a talent thing or if it's just them growing into their physical and knowing how to use their body better. But I don't know how true that is. So I wouldn't argue against it, nor would I argue for it. So. I just saw, I pulled up Joe Dana's bio quick. I don't think he coached any of our guys. He was all in the NFL until last year at Miami and with the Jags and the Jets. So I don't oh. think he's worked with any of our, any of our guys that we have. I didn't realize he was in the NFL before he went to Miami. Yeah. I also didn't do any research on him other than the fact that looked at the style of defense he ran. And being with the Jets makes sense that he ran a lot of men because yep. Sauce Gardner and the guys that the Jets have that are, you know, Man corners. Yeah. I, I remember him from being in the NFL. Didn't realize he went to Miami. You're like some of these position coaches, you know, you hear their name and then you're like, oh, yeah, he's great. I'll like, definitely track him. And then you forget who he is the next day. And then you hear his name again. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know a ton about him either. Heck yeah. Uh, so draft needs for the defense. What do you what are you thinking we need to do? Where do we need to get like some cost controlled contracts on defense? Yeah. Uh, safety, I think probably priority number one uh we have you know two solid guys to start next season in theory taylor rap and then mike edwards mike edwards only on a one-year deal they could do the same thing they did with taylor rap like one-year deal see how it goes if it goes well we'll bring you back Mm -hmm. um but that's not guaranteed like he could have a really good year and then want to go somewhere else and and get paid you know by all means uh do your thing and then but after them you know um damar hamlin only one year left on his deal. I don't really see us bringing him back just, you know, based on his performance on the field. And then after that, the I don't, we don't really have much else in the way of safety depth. Cam Lewis, Cam can, Lewis, play yeah, some, Cam Lewis can play some safety in a pinch, uh, but not someone they want to rely on. So, yeah, I, I would be ben surprised if – Safety in a pinch if you needed it, but – yeah, exactly. Like I, I, yeah, I, I would imagine it's probably safety goes in day two. Um, I think they're going to make some kind of moves to get more day two picks. We only have one pick in day two right now, our second round pick. So whether that be trading back in the first round, trading back into the third round, Bean loves his draft day trades. So I, I would imagine we come away with the safety in day two, and then yeah, D line always a need. You just need you need horses on the D line to keep it fresh. Yeah. I know the one position I, I – sorry to cut you off, but the one position I don't think is a big draft need is linebacker, and that's just because we have so many good ones. So a- anything else I'm okay with, but uh, safety so number one. Besides Daquan Jones, what defensive player has been better in Buffalo? Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, uh, 
freaking Tremaine Evans yeah, played better in Buffalo than he did in, in Chicago when he left. Uh, who else yeah. here played better? Some, mostly the defensive ends that we brought in have not been better here than they were before. Like Ron Miller towards ACL. We brought in yeah. that guy from Washington. He sucked. Uh, yeah. Edwards, or not uh, Edwards, uh, Mario Addison. He, yeah, he was like, old. But those guys are all older. Like We were like bringing 40. them in like kind of on the tail end of their career. Like, But the young yeah, guys, like you said, they end up improving. Like, Yeah, Poyer was like a special teams, healthy scratch guy in Cleveland for four years. Came here all pro. Hyde was a nickel corner in Green Bay. Came here all pro. Seven, yeah. Even Russell Douglas, I would say, played better here second half of the season than he had in the past. Like, it took him a while. Douglas a while to find his groove. Like, and he became solid in um, – uh, Green Bay, but still he was their number two corner. He came over here and very quickly became our number one. Uh, not just on paper, like play wise, became our number one. And I yeah. know like C- C- Christian Benford doesn't count because like he didn't play anywhere else before. Taron Johnson doesn't necessarily count because he didn't play anywhere else before. But those are both FCS kids that we brought in. That Taron Johnson became an All Pro. Christian Benford became an an undoubted starter in the NFL. Villanova like, and Weber State. Yeah, like Taron Johnson was the dude that got hit in the head running the the, the drill at the the combine, like that video that goes viral. Oh, everywhere. I remember. I didn't realize that was him, but I remember that. Yeah, yeah, where he turns yeah. the wrong way and boom. Yeah, that's Taron Johnson. Like, yeah, so maybe yeah, you know, like they didn't play anywhere else in the NFL before, but right, they no no one people. else thought saw them doing this. So Miss Amy here, she must be a, either a big Terrell Bernard fan or she's his aunt. Uh, I don't. <laughs> One of the two is true, but Bernard is amazing. We'll have a C on his jersey this coming year. Let's have him go Buffalo. Yes, Miss Wagner. Heck yeah, I'm, I'm for it. And I'm just poking fun. Don't, don't take it personal. I'm just joking around with people. All right, so uh, the draft safety is your, your first priority. I would also say um, defensive end is, is a priority to get one. I want to get one. Uh, you know, yeah, We brought back up Vanessa. We have Groot. We have Von Miller. We have Kingsley Jonathan. We have... Two Hill, we brought in, who I think is yep. going to be a good young addition for the rotation. But I think we need to bring somebody in, uh, you know, round three, round four. We probably need to, we'll need to trade back up to round three to get there. Yeah. Round three. But uh, I like some guys. Uh, Braylon Trice. I like uh, Mohamed Kamara, is, is a nice piece I like up there. Uh, a kid from, from Clemson, I forget his name. Horrible names. Yeah, I don't remember his name either. He's like in the fifth round, but I like Yeah. Him. Yeah, I like Cole Bishop out of Utah, um, and then the Maryland kid. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Cole, Cole Bishop out of Utah is just a name that I, I would see could see them maybe even getting in the fourth. But I, I yeah. think he put some really good tape out last year in the Pac-12. I think he's going in the second or third round. Yeah, I was wishful thinking, but I think yeah. I think that in the, in the third or fourth round, if we were to move up, uh, oh, there we go. Neeland, it's a good name right there. I like I like Neeland, uh, a defensive end, but. My favorite yeah. safety prospect is looking like a third or fourth round pick, and that is Kalen Bullock. He yeah. is yeah. Micah Hyde style, like just he's that guy. So if you bring in Mike Edwards on a one year deal, and then you have a guy like Kalen Bullock on the roster rotating in or, or just being behind him and learning for a year, you could then transition away. Or if he takes the job, you know. Yeah, everything's earned here, right? So you, you may be the starter because you're the veteran in the room, but if he takes your job, he took your job, and that's just the way. Yeah, it is. I love. And Kevin like we Moore. said, Edwards only had a one year deal. Taylor wraps a three year deal, but really only a one year deal as far as like money that's guaranteed. So if a rookie comes in and takes the job, it's not like we're married to these guys for long term contracts and you know yep. feel incentive to play them. So yeah, like. If a safety comes into Buffalo, they should feel like they have every opportunity to go out there and earn immediate playing time. Yeah. And I'm saying here, uh, cornerback, uh, if, if Razul is uh, is let go after this year, you know, I, they always take a corner late and they almost always do good. You know, Dane Jackson, seventh round pick. Uh, Razul, yeah. Doug, Razul Douglas, um, uh, Benford. Uh, Benford, sixth round pick. You know, like they, they just do well. See, Cooper DeGene is listed as a cornerback but has played safety. He, he, he plays all over the secondary. He's basically Micah Hyde in college. Yeah, he reminds me of, uh, like, a Jabril Peppers when he was at Michigan. Like, they, they lined him up all over the place. He, okay, that's he, what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they lined him up all over the place. Uh, he can play safety. I would, you know, he scores. To see him play. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays all over the place. He's a good player. Yeah, I, I, he if you if they were to pay, take him at twenty eight, right? Let's say the, the other receivers that you would think that are going to be there, no one wants to trade with us, so we can't trade. Like, like you got to trade, but you can't trade if somebody else doesn't want to. And so if you're stuck there, and you know, the last guy, let's say seven receivers go before you get to pick. You know, Lad McConkey goes to the freaking Cardinals right before you go. You're like, uh, Plan B, and Cooper G's yeah. still on board. I wouldn't be mad at taking Cooper DeGene and then trying to move up in the second round to try and get one of these corners or safeties, like, or wide receivers, excuse me, like a Leggett or a uh, Jalen Polk, who I actually really like. I'll watch the tape on him. I really like Jalen Polk um, in the second round. But the, Yeah, I even, depending on the board falls, I've seen some mocks too where like Chop Robinson or Latu Latu were there at, at 28. Like, I wouldn't necessarily hate that either. Then imagine, you know, you move up in the second round to go get a receiver in the 40s. Like, uh, yeah, if the board falls a certain way, I could see the Bills going defense in the first round for sure. Yeah. I, it just really depends on the value that they have. I, I don't, I've seen a lot of fans, like my man Bills fan 78-83 here, said that, you know, it, it wouldn't piss me off if the guys are all gone. Like, I'd be fine if, 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 the, if the guys are all gone, if McConkie's gone, if uh, Mitchell's gone, if – uh, Brian Thomas is gone. The big three are gone. And yep, then let's right. say someone else jumps up and takes Xavier Leggett ahead of us. Like, all right, well, we're not taking the receiver at 28. We're either moving back right. or we're staying put and picking the best defensive player available because on offense, really all we need is wide receiver. You could argue center, but. Yeah. And if uh, you trade. If, 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 yeah, like it's not worth reaching and taking a receiver at 28 that you don't have a 28 grade on. Like if, if Troy Franklin or, um, like Keon Coleman are still there at 28, we could probably get them in the late 30s or early 40s. Like maybe we move back. Maybe we take a defensive player and move back up. Like we have 10 picks in the draft and we're not going to draft all 10 of them in their assigned slots. So, yeah, yeah, if the board, I think that's the most important thing is the draft is don't, strictly draft based on need where you're sacrificing like getting other good players if, if that makes any sense like don't just oh we need a receiver so we're taking a receiver at 28 like well if the board plays a certain way and there's a, a stud dn who's going to come in and start immediately or a cooper DeGene who can come in and you know contribute on our defense day one take one of those guys and you know get a receiver you have a a, a better round grade on in, in, in a later round so like play the board as it falls to you and don't try to like pigeonhole picks in just because you need somebody at that position. Who's that defensive end Dallas from uh, Alabama? What's what's his last name? Is it Turner? Oh, yes. Yeah, Dallas Turner. Okay, so I had a mock draft where he failed me at 28. I would take him. I had to take him. Like you, you <laughs> yeah, you have to. Like right. that dude should have gone 10 or, or 11 and he's here at 20. Like you have to. The receivers are all gone. And Dallas Turner, because they, all the receivers are gone, somehow got pushed so far up the board. You got to go that way. You have to. You'd be a yeah, fool yeah. not to. Especially with the way this draft could fall. Like, there could very realistically be five quarterbacks that go in the top 12. There could be six that go in the top 28. Like, players who are higher first round grades are going to go later just because quarterback is that one position where teams say, forget everything you just said about don't like you know, draft based on where they fall on your board, just get a quarterback because you need a quarterback. So that's going to make teams like us that don't need a quarterback make the second half of the first round real interesting. So there are going to be some players that most years would not be available in the in the teens, in the 20s, in the 30s, where, you know, some, some guys are going to be there. I think, I think our part of the draft between 25 and 32 is going to be the part of the draft that's most interesting due to trades. Yeah, because of the way the quarterback class is built, because it's a great yeah. quarterback class. When you look at it, you got your top three guys, your 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 Caleb Williams, your Drake Mays, and your Jaden Daniels. But then you have Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy. You know they're saying four of those guys are probably going in the top fifteen, but I could see somebody wanting a Michael Penix Jr. Calling yeah, up, calling up Buffalo. Hey, uh, this is the the Washington Commanders. We interested in jumping up to your pick. You know. You give us 60 and 28, we'll give you 36 and 40 and throw in a seventh or, or a sixth to, you know, sweeten the pot a little bit for you. We're trying to get our quarterback on with the fifth-year option. Yeah. 
I make the move because then you move back. Yeah, hundred percent. Twenty-eight to thirty-six. I'm becoming... you move back eight picks, and then you're gaining twenty on the second round. Yeah, as the we've gotten more and more in the draft process, I've become more team trade back than I am team trade up. Because, like Bo Nix, for example, like everybody seems to have a consensus. Like, if he doesn't go to the Broncos at twelve, he's probably going in the second round. Maybe the Broncos, like Bo Nix, is there at twenty-eight. They, you know, make a switch with us, give us a couple picks, go get Bo Nix at twenty-eight. Don't have to worry about going to the second round, like you said. You get him for that fifth year of team control, and then we just like get up picks. And we were saying we don't have many day two picks. There's, a lot of gems in day two, so yeah. I mean, look, you look at the NFL's landscape. Look at wide receiver. Take your top ten wide receivers. Yeah, Time where they got the first round picks. Yeah, Their right. Second, third, fourth, fifth round picks, most of them. Diggs was um, a fifth, yeah. Yeah, Diggs was a, uh, so was Puka Nakua. You know, yep. like you, you got quality players in that in that range. Not saying that that's where you want to pick them, but for me, it's 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 really going to be an interesting spot in the draft because. We may sit there the whole first round, starting at 8 o'clock, and not take a player in the first round, but stack up on picks and then be able to move around because we have so many late-round picks to where if Bean feels, you know, froggy, he can be like, all right, cool. I've got 36 and 40, and I've got no third-round pick, so I'll trade and move into the third round with some of these other picks because I want to yeah. stack up good, good productive players. Now that I've got a few more draft picks, I have more ammunition to move up. Yeah, I'd, I'd like that move, but we got to get to our mock draft. <laughs> <laughs> but what, do you, what 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 is what is your ideal situation? Ah, uh, so I've kind of gone back and forth. If Most there's a, a way, like Brian Thomas Jr. would be my like number one guy that we can get. Like if he's available around twenty, like it'd be pretty easy to move up and get him. But you don't want to reach too far. And if, and if kind of like if he isn't there right around there, maybe we wait and see if a guy like what gets there at 28, which in theory he should be. There's it seems like like after the big three receivers, and then you throw in Brian Thomas in there because he's definitely the consensus four. Kind of the receivers like five through eleven, like your McConkeys, your Coleman's, your Leggett's, your Franklin's. It seems like they could go anywhere from like 20 to 50. Um, so unless there's somebody the Bills absolutely love, like trading back and getting picks, like we said, I do not think is a bad idea. If we can go from having one day two pick to then having three or four day two pick just by moving back, you know, 10 spots, we're probably going to get a solid receiver. Trading okay. back and getting picks, I think, is looking better and better, especially when, you know, going into the draft before we traded Stephon Diggs, the big talk was we need to use this draft to get our depth back because we got rid of a lot of our depth to save salary caps, uh, salary cap space. Now that Diggs is gone, you know, now it's, oh, we need to get that big time number one receiver. Well, not necessarily. We have some guys, we have Dalton Kincaid, we have Dawson Knox, we have James Cook, and most importantly, we have Josh Allen who can, you know, distribute the ball freely now that Diggs isn't there. So maybe we trade back, get some more picks, get deeper, get younger, get cheaper. Uh, and then still get a solid receiver in the front half of round two, but not stretch on anybody or late in round one when, you know, we might not have a round one grade on them. Spiders. All right. So I I like the way you're looking at that. It feels like you have a very intentional idea of how you'd want things to go and that you're not only going in with a – plan but also a backup plan i like that and i think that that's more what bean is going to be doing he's going to kind of let it come as it you know as it, let it go as it comes to him and i think that's the just that's just the way to handle it there's no other way yeah. to do it yeah. all right so mock draft we're doing seven rounds we're going normal speed uh i'm using the, the uh pro football networks mock simulator because i can see the players i can see the picks and i can pause it and trade it's all pretty centralized i don't know if you've used this one before have you um, I don't think so. No, oh, um, to, we did the one like a month or so ago, but I don't think that was this. You're about to witness some like we're probably the coolest working mock draft. So cool. I, can, I just paused it already. All right. Yeah. Players on the right over here. Yep. Drafted players over here, and then this the things to do right here. Sweet. Right. Let's get it. Oh, that there it is. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors, Fashanu, Terry Arnold. Wow, Lotu, Lotu, nine. Yeah. 
So interesting here, uh, Cardinal or the uh, the Falcons go defensive back. The first five picks basically went exactly how people think they're going to go. Right? Yeah. Quarterback, 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 Marvin Harrison, Joe Walt. Uh, Malik Nabors to Giants getting uh, Daniel Jones, someone to throw to finally. <laughs> maybe maybe he'll mean? be able to fall out. What, what do you mean? They have Isaiah Hodgins and they had Cole Beasley. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then uh, uh, everybody calls him Olu Fashanu, but I give it a shot. Olumuiwa Fashanu. Terry and Arnold to the Falcons is interesting. And uh, Leatu Latu to the Bears. While Adunze is still on the board, is wild. Yeah, that's where it could get interesting. If it falls like this, and Adunze is, I, I don't think the Vikings or Broncos would take him. Like, if one of the big three falls into the mid teens, like maybe that's when we do say, you know what? Like, screw it. Like, let's let's like let's bet the house. Like, let's go all in. Let's make a move and and get one of those big three. And like, I could get behind it. Like, I'd be excited about it. Is it like? necessarily responsible down the road who knows but it'd be interesting if one of the big three is on the board into the teens like you have to imagine brandon bean at least makes some calls there you go lady right, my, my dog she's old and she wanted to go on the couch but <laughs> my uh, char- the laptop charger here is was in the way all right so yeah i agree with that uh Junze slipping would be insane because then yeah. the other wide receiver prospects also probably slip uh, yeah, the Vikings and the Broncos probably don't take him. I think the Broncos could. They just traded Jerry Judy away, and their their big weapon on offense right now is Cortland Sutton. But also, if Brock Bauer because the uh, I have four dogs. This is going nuts right now. Uh, but the the Raiders clearly jumped up because that was the Jets pick, so they traded. Yeah. The Broncos, now that J.J. McCarthy is off the board, they're either going to go quarterback, Bo Nix or Pen- Michael Penix Jr., or take the best available players, which are Brock Bowers, Dallas Turner, or Roma Dunze. Yeah, Brock Bowers is a stud. Um, I can see stud. maybe the Vikings doing that. The Broncos, I feel like they have to go quarterback, and maybe they trade back because I, I I've heard they really like Bo Nix. Who knows if that's true? It is smokescreen season. But maybe, you know, in real life, maybe they trade back and get him at the later half of the first, try to get some other picks in there. Um, but, yeah, interesting board through the first ten. All right. So, um, if, I'm, if I'm the Broncos, uh, if, if it is Bo that they like, then they better take him. But there's too much talent on the board for me. I'd be waiting. <laughs> yeah, All agreed. Right. Let's start. We'll go to 15 or you want to go 20? Yeah, let's go to 15. 15. All right. Two, three, four, wow. Five. Wow, they took Brian Thomas Jr. over Roma Dunze, the Broncos. Yeah. That's crazy. I wouldn't necessarily love Roma Dunze going to the Jets, but. Me either. I'd hate it. <laughs> I'd hate <laughs> right. it so much. <laughs> Dallas Turner goes to the Rams. Okay, yeah, they need to replace their edge rushers. They lost Floyd and Von Miller over the past few years, and they just lost uh, Aaron Donald to retirement, so they're going to need to restock that defensive line. Uh, yeah, so you can go and get the best defensive lineman in the draft, defensive end in this case. But in my opinion, he's the best. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and continue from here. Twenty. Let's do it. All right, go to twenty. If you see something interesting, just say pause. Yeah. All right. So Jared nothing, first. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing that we're losing sleep over. Jared Verse, uh, former former U Albany standout. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll Google it to make sure I'm not lying, but I'm 99% sure he started at U Albany and then transferred. Yep, well, I am he did. Side, I am on this side of the uh, of the computer, so or of the draft. So I'm controlling this. You go ahead and you can look at whatever you need. Yeah, he was U Albany and then he uh, transferred to Florida State. Kind of like um, Oh, uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name, but the Jermaine Johnson from the Jets from Florida yeah. State. He was a last, he was a last chance U kid. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't even know. Yeah, that. he was at uh, Independence with uh, Jason Brown, the interesting head coach they had. That's pretty cool. All right, so the two big t- defensive tackles are on the board still. The big three wide receivers are gone. Brian Thomas Jr. is gone. Uh, but the two big defensive tackles, uh, Troy Faltanu, still on the board. 
Yeah. Uh, interesting corners here. Nate Wiggins and Cooper DeGene, who they have listed as safety, but we all we all know he could go safety corner. Doesn't matter. Uh, center, Graham Barton, who's been climbing up boards lately. Jackson Powers Johnson. Cooley McKinstry. This is a uh, 28. I can see somebody trying to jump up for Michael Penix. All right. Let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Where are we going to? 25 or we want to go to? Yeah, let's go to 25. See if there's anybody we want to move up two spots for. All right. Let's see who we got. Troy Fautana to the Dolphins. Cooper DeGene to the Eagles. Michael Penix to the Vikings. Uh, Tyler Guyton to the Cowboys. No surprise there. I, I, I let it go too far. We're at our pick now. Yeah, well, um, the Packers take a center. Not surprised. Both centers yeah, going to row. There's like a little mini run on offensive lineman there. Yeah. Tackle center, center. Nate Wiggins to the Cardinals. We have our picks a litter at defensive tackle. Uh, that second tier of wide receivers. I consider uh, Ryan Thomas Jr. 1.5 tier. Yeah. Know, yeah. 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 In that middle there. If he, if he had more years of success, then, uh, you know. Like well, more years of production, like he did this past year, he'd be among those three, no matter what. But right, he is who he is. So, all right. So on the board, Johnny Newton, Byron Murphy, wide receiver. We have Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Keon Coleman. I'm not really interested in him in the first round. Yeah. If it falls like this, I would not be opposed to trading back into the early in the second. Because we can probably get Worthy or Mitchell or one of those guys early in the second, depending upon what it looks like. You want to explore a trade? Yeah, why not? Uh, where do you think about going to? What, what, what position? I don't know. Something in the 30s seems like makes sense. 30s? Okay, so we have the Panthers, the, the Patriots, uh, the Cardinals, the Commanders, the Chargers, the, tank, the Titans, the Panthers again, and then the Commanders again. About the Panthers, I've done it with the Commanders before. I've not done it with the Panthers. Spend twenty-eight and sixty for the two picks they have. Yeah. Let's see, let's see if we can do that. And then if if they don't want that, you can always throw in like a fifth. Just to right, see. yeah, or, yeah. Or something next year that's future us's problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, let's see, Carolina, Spotlight. yeah. So you throw them 28 and 60. Take 33 and 39. Let's see if we can get them to trade up. Nope. Damn. They ain't down for that. Let's see if I sweeten the pot a little bit. 28, 60. Go get 33 and 39. And then throw them a fourth next year. Damn. Tough crowd. Let's see about the commander. <laughs> let's, let's check out the commies. 28, 60, 36, and 40. I doubt they take it here, but we'll see. Nope. Got one more time. <laughs> yeah. Sweeten the pot with a pick this year. 28, 60, 36, and 40. 40, and we'll throw them 133. Nope. Okay, we're picking. Jeez. All yeah, all right. All right, so what do you think? You think Johnny Newton, Byron Murphy, uh, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy? Yeah. I got, a, I got a weird feeling about Worthy. Yeah, what scares me is he seems to be one of those, like, small, fast guys that just doesn't pan out in the NFL. I'm getting, like, big John Ross vibes with him. So I'm not because John Ross was not as technical a route runner in college. In college, Xavier Worthy runs routes. He yeah. People off the line. He just he's not big, so you get kind of worried about him being eaten up by bigger corners like as Jalen Ramsey. But he actually does play well. He does. He actually is technical with his route running. He just happens to be that fast. I think he's he would be the exception to that. But I don't know if I bet my career as a GM on that. <laughs> right. If I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I would lean Mitchell over Worthy 
okay. also wouldn't be mad at one of the D tackles. And then if we go one of the D tackles, maybe we can move up into the forties and try okay. and snag or oh no. do the I little the, it right before I pick. Oh yeah. Let's see. Okay, so who's offering what? We got forty nine and eighty. Your pick next year doesn't do anything for my mock draft, so no thank you. Yeah, no. 85, 37 and 69. Nice. 28 and 204. I don't hate that. You move back nine spots, you yeah, get a third. I don't, I don't hate that at all. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. You want to take that one? Yeah, let's do it. A lot of guys on the board still. Nobody were interested in just yet. Yeah. There we go. That was easy. Oh, they moved. took Keon Coleman. Idiots. Yeah, fine. There goes Worthy. The, there Coleman. goes Mitchell. Damn. We got two offers to see. Nope. To no. both of those. No. All right, so Johnny Newton's still on the board. That cleans things up. Lad McConkey's on the board. Uh, TJ I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at Lad McConkey here. I feel like he matches what we – are trying to do offensively, which is having guys who can line up all over. Like Curtis Samuel can line up in the slot, can line up outside. Shakir, slot outside. Knox and Kincaid can line up at tight end, can line up in the slot. James Cook can line up in the backfield, can line up at receiver. McConkey can kind of line up all over the field, and I feel like having a bunch of those kind of like gadget-type dudes is kind of the vibe we're going for. What do you, what do you think about him? I, I, I think the world of Lab McConkey, uh, one big reason is uh, Lab McConkey – runs routes extremely well oh yeah to me i've been saying this for a while and my man dan mitchell i don't know if you saw my video or if me and him me and him just had the conversation to me lad mcconkey is the closest player in this draft skill for skill comparison wise to stefan diggs period yeah so you yeah. lost diggs if you draft mcconkey yeah. you're basically getting a guy who plays similarly for the same position just for you know Cheaper deal, like you. Yeah, now you, have, you know, cross control for four years. I see a lot of Leggett's in the comments. I'm not a, I'm not a Leggett guy. I really Leggett. Am not. Yeah, it scares me because he's such like a, a freak athletically, but yeah. he really only put up numbers for one year, and they and weren't that great either. No, and it, it's and it's not like oh he didn't have a quarterback. He had Spencer Rattler for the two years. He was starting there. Yeah, I like yeah Leggett, Leggett is. Leggett is like you like put him and running routes on air and you're like, like he's a, a first team all bus, you know, first team all getting off the bus looks like exactly what you want. But yeah, like this little only production for one year just worries me. Yeah. If he's there at 60, I would absolutely take Xavier Leggett. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no. but early in the second, you know, or in the first round at all, I'm staying away from him. He just doesn't have the production for me. I, I love his story. Like he's got a story, you know, where he had he had the car accident when he was a kid, and he yeah. had to overcome things, and he's got a really good attitude, and he's a billsy kind of guy. Yeah, I love his, I, I love his accent too. I haven't ever heard him speak. L listen to him talk; it's great. I got I got to do it now. Um, but yeah, I like Leggett. If he's there at sixty, I would absolutely take him. But for my money, I want somebody who I think is going to be really, really good starting off, not somebody we have to develop. We have time to develop people. We don't have to win a Super Bowl this year, but I'm trying to win one now. You know, like, <laughs> right? Like I want, I want. And to me, Lab McConkey, like you said, he goes all over the field. You can play him out of the backfield. You can play him out of the slot. He can play outside. He played seventy percent of his snaps outside. Yeah. You know, and so uh, my man Walter says McConkey is a high floor, low ceiling guy. To me, I don't see him as a wide receiver one. Who saw? Puka we don't need him to be a one. And who saw, who saw Puka Nakua being a wide receiver one? Like. I don't see a lot of things, you know, and I get surprised, but this is a second round pick at this point. And I think he could be a one, but he might not be one. We we'll see. But I think his ceiling is fine. You know, he, if he if he runs uh, runs the routes very well, gets open, catches everything that runs away, I don't see why he couldn't be a one. So I'm not saying he is though either. So don't don't think it that way. But I think Lad McConkey is the pick. Yes, I agree. All right, let's see what we got. Laddie. All right, let's see where everybody else goes. We'll go to like 45 and then pause it. Cool. Chris Braswell, Bo Nix to the Jets. Troy Franklin to the Colts. All right, so after us, Max Melton went. Johnny Newton 
to the Panthers. They do need that help. Adisa Isaac. I've heard a lot of people talk about him. I don't know what the big deal is about Adisa Isaac. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm not too sure either, especially, you know, playing behind him and Chop Robinson last year were a good duo. But, yeah, I definitely watch more Chop film than I did him. I think everybody Chopped did. more Chop film, as you say. All right, so we have uh, Troy Franklin on the board, or just came off the board. Uh, on the board right now, Christian Haynes is still up there, guard from uh, UConn. Uh, Zach Frazier, center from West Virginia, who I've seen climbing boards. Uh, Rook or Rororo. <laughs> Cooper BB. Uh, Xavier Leggett is 51. We, If we wanted to double dip at wide receiver, yeah, potentially try and move up with maybe the Eagles or the Bengals. Because um, we're at 60. Yeah. Moving up 10 spots probably cost us a fourth or fifth. Yeah, I think we can let it go a little bit longer if we All want right. to. What, what number yeah. do I stop at? I uh, stop it at 50. 50, okay. So Jalen Polk went before he was able to get. Even the Eagles in the simulator don't think he's going to be that great. <laughs> All right, so there's, there's the Steelers, the Vikings, the Eagles again, and then the, Bronco, and then the Browns. The Browns could be looking at a wide receiver because they don't people's Jones left. Yeah. Uh, they have still have um, – Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. But I don't know who else they have at wide receiver. So that's a that's a spot he could go. Uh Phillies is well, no, Philly just took one. Uh the Vikings, I don't see doing it, but the Steelers could be a spot that he goes. What you want to do? I'll let it ride for a little bit. Like, I don't know. Would we be moving up to get Leggett? Like, I don't know if that's worth it to move up to get another receiver. Like, we already got one. Double dipping at receiver, I don't hate at all, but I don't know if we give up more picks I like some, for him. I like some guys later in the draft too, like Jenny yeah. Cole, Holy Cross. Love him. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Roman, like Roman from, Wilson, Roman, Roman Wilson, Wilson from Michigan, the third or fourth. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's let it ride. We'll we'll ride it out to like 56, 57. Yeah, perfect. Zach Frazier, Junior Colson, is able to get to the Jags. That makes sense. Cedric Gray, Jonathan Brooks off the board. I think we let us ride. We got Ruka Roro on the board. We got Leonard Taylor. Safeties are still on the board. Michael Hall. Yeah. A bunch of guys in that area right there. My guy, yep. Braylon Price, is still there. I love him. Yep. In the second round. Agreed. Let's see what we got. Javon Bullard just went. Michael Hall, Jr. We are now on the board. Chargers, 105. No. No. Cardinals, I would take that one if that fourth was this year, but it's not. Right. In real life, I would take that here. Not. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, so on the board, Rucororo, Cam Kinchins, Braylon Trice. Those are those are three guys I would go after here. Yeah, I, I would. I feel like it falls like this. Kinchins could very well be the pick. Yep. Has good relationship with our safety coach, uh, yep. Dana. Unless Dana says something bad about him, maybe he doesn't want him. But um, no one's going to have better scouting on him than we are. You know. <laughs> exactly. Um, but Braylon Trice is, is is probably my favorite of the group. Uh, I like Rook, but he's very raw. Yeah. He'd yeah. be starting at defensive tackle for us. He'd be coming in to learn behind Daquan Jones and Ed Oliver and then rotating in with Ed, you know, probably on pass rushing downs and, and stuff like that. I, I like Rook a lot too. And that value at 47, that – again, I like safeties later in the draft. Yeah. That's a tough one. What are you thinking? I'm leaning safety. Just because especially right now we don't have another – no, we have a third. We have a third. Um, I don't know. I would still lean safety. feel like that's kind of the one position that – So, remember, we have a third-round pick now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah, says 69. Yeah, Bishop could be there. Bishop and Bullock. Those are oh, yeah, to 69. to nine picks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'd be okay with it, with the okay. D-tackle here. All right. So, we want to go Rook? Yeah, let's do it. Best that available. That name's gonna be fun to say. <laughs> yeah. I hope he's a dog. All right, let's see. If Kinchins falls to 69. Nope. Come on, Trice. Nope, he's gone too. Damn it. Damn, he to All right, so no thank you, Minnesota. We're not moving back that far. We just we, we just got this damn pick, man. <laughs> oh. This I don't hate. I don't hate that either. Maybe get like a Cole Bishop at 80. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or a, uh, or a, uh, if Bishop's not there because he's at, he's ranked seventy five, Caleb yeah. Bullock go behind him. Yeah, exactly. Like get one of those guys at eighty, see if they fall. I wouldn't say no to this. Okay, we'll say yes then. Boom. Yes. Let's do it. You took my freaking defensive end, jackass. <laughs> there goes Cole Bishop. Yep. All right. Pause here. Uh, Tez Walker went off the board. Roger yeah, Rogan Garden. Peyton Wilson. There's more linebackers going off the board than I thought. Bo Braid went off yeah. the board right before us. All right, let's we're at 80, right? So four Yeah, more let's let, let, let it ride and see if our safety is there. I Dylan think he will be. So Andre Sweat. Andre Sweat all. just went too. Some people had him mocked in the first round in the initial mock drafts. Not so much anymore. Yeah, well he went cruising for a boozing, so Yeah, guys can't have hobbies anymore. Come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I don't hate this trade either. Yeah, move down to six. Just move keep down taking six. all the Texans picks. I'm down for it. You want you up for moving up to moving back six? Yeah, why not? I'd probably still get the safety we want. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Boom. And then we just move up, you know, from that other Yeah, side. like you said, exactly. We can move back up later in the third if we want to. Jesus. Right, I feel like we have to pick here or else we're just yeah, gonna think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reject it. Sorry, buddy. Pick 90. Kalen Bullock is there. Anybody in front of him that we would like? We already we already took a D tackle. We don't yep. need a running back. Nope. I mean, we do, but not here. Yeah, I like, I like yeah, that. I'm, I'm, I'm probably taking Bullock. All right, Bullock it is. Oh, that's... So far, solid. Addressing the needs. Yeah, getting more picks, getting deeper, getting right. younger. The man says, we already have McConkie. His name is Shakir. They are two different body types, buddy. Yeah. Two different body types. All right, let's pause it. We're at 105. We went from 86 to 105. A lot of guys still on the board. Renardo Green came off. Braylon Allen, who I really like. Yep. Blake Corum off the board. I don't see the big deal about Blake Corum. Everybody, there's a lot of people who love him, but he played behind the best offensive line in college football. He's a Baltimore guy, so I like him, but I don't hate it. Yeah, a little is undersized. He, is he? Yeah, I don't think he's that big. I'll I'll double check. I mean, I but... can just click his name; it'll it'll, it'll pull him up. Oh, that's him. Uh, yeah, five, five, eight, eight, five, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't hate that pick if the Bills were to take him, but yeah, I, uh, he played behind like the best offensive line in college football. Yeah, if we do draft a running back, though, I think we need a little bit more of a hammer type guy, um, mm-hmm. kind of like an Estime from Notre Dame, something like that. More yes. physical runner, uh, Snell oh. from Kentucky. I love that you said his name right. <laughs> yeah, Ben is uh, he, we, the whole time does it wrong. Dude, I'm I, I I am a I'm a name guy. I'm a name guy. Is he trying to get twenty three picks again? I am not, Mister Collins. If you notice, I'm trading two picks and getting two picks, so we're staying. At the same number. That math doesn't math. All right, here we go. Um, Mustafa, I see in the comments. Yeah, I like to estimate. Yeah, there's a lot of good players. We, we'll go ahead and let this ride to 15, 115. Yeah. Jacob Cowan comes off the board. Good pick. Malik Mustafa just went to the Chargers. Double QB for the Raiders. They just took Rattler. Hey, it worked for the, for the Commanders, didn't it? Yeah, they took RG three and then took Kirk. Yeah, cousins Spencer Rattler might be the Kirk cousins of that deal. <laughs> That's right. All right, Jermaine Burton went off the board. I like him too, but apparently he's got issues on the board. We still have Shipley, Irving, Jaden Hicks. I wouldn't mind double dipping at safety. No, I wouldn't one. either. Estimate there. Mm-hmm. Estimate good. Uh, Kalen King at corner. I like him. Yep. Uh, Michael Pratt, I would love to see the Bills get a, a backup QB on a four-year controlled contract. I thought we would do that until we signed Trubisky to a multi-year deal. Now I just think we're, we're rolling with Trubisky. So Trubisky is a two-year deal, yeah. Um, I can see the Bills going like in the sixth or seventh round, though. Yeah, like a Joe Milton or somebody like that. Stash him on the, on the squad. All right, yeah. let's, let's go ahead and ride it out. In case you need somebody to throw an orange 105 yards, Joe Milton's oh. your guy. Patriots just took him anyway. Yeah. Jamari Thrash to the to the Bucks. I like Jamari Thrash. Uh, Javon Solomon, good good edge rusher from Troy. Uh, there was another edge rusher. Where is he from? 
uh, Jalex Hunt. I wonder if he's on the board still. Right there. Jalex Hunt. Love that player. Yeah. Yeah. He, small school kid from Houston. He is a wrecking machine. Man. I see. I don't see him being here in the fourth round. He Houston Christian six foot three two fifty two Rascor, score nine two two. We we love those guys. Yes, we do. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Like we got two. We have, what are, we can take him here because we can decent chance we can get Estime in four picks. Like having three picks in five here, you know, kind of like when you're at the end of the snake in fantasy football, you know, we can. Yeah, Probably we can take him here and then you know see who's there. That's true. Yeah, because we have picks one twenty seven and one twenty eight as well. Yeah. Or we can pack him something and try and move up to get the other guy if we wanted. But right. So we, we, yeah, who we take him here? Jalen Hunt. Yeah, let's, or? Take, yeah well, let's take your boy. All right, Jalen Hunt. Boom. Come on, Jaden Hicks, make it. Jalen Hicks made it. Bam. We go him and is it Estime still there? No, they took him. Who took us? Oh shit. Did that. they? Yeah, they took him. The freaking right yeah. here. Oh yeah, damn. Yeah, so we can go. I'm trying to look at, yeah, look at the running backs. Who are left Shipley here. is kind of a small, kind of a scat back. Bucky Irving, about the same. Lobby. Yeah, same. Yeah. Jalen Wright, 210. That's a, that's a nice running back right there. All right, so we, we, we in agreement on Jaden Hicks? Yeah, let's do it. Boom, Jaden Hicks, Washington State. And then running back, Jalen Wright is a good size guy. Malik Washington, at wide receiver, still here. Uh, Jalen Ford, linebacker, not bad. Mason McCormick, guard, if you want to go guard from South Dakota State. Yeah. He's been climbing up boards. What do you think we go here? Ooh. Yeah, I was just about to say Ray Davis, actually. You want, you want um, to go Ray Davis? Yeah, yeah, I like him. He's. I love that prospect. Yeah, I do too. He's decently fast for how big he is, good one-cut runner, kind of that can run in between the tackles, which is what we're lacking in running back. So, yeah. True that. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a guy, Vidal. Yeah, he's from Troy. Uh, he's he's probably a sixth or seventh round guy. Malik Washington. Look, if Malik Washington is there at our next pick, yeah, absolutely. Unless you'd rather risk uh, losing Ray Davis and taking the wide receiver now. No, I think we go Ray Davis. Ray Davis, it is. Malik Washington oh, yeah, right after. Yeah. Yeah, sure. The Dolphins are sending us. I don't hate that trade. I don't either. Let me hide that real quick. It's the Dolphins, but I hate the I hate them, but I don't hate that trade. That's right. Let's see, Shipley, Bucky Irving. Is there anybody here who I'm interested? Mason McCormick, kinda. Brendan Rice, kinda. Yeah. Jordan Jefferson. Big boy. I don't hate that, but we already we already took a, a project D tackle. I don't know if we need another. Is he is Jordan Jefferson a project? Um, I mean oh, I wouldn't say he's a project, time. but yeah, I'm just saying we already we already took an interior lineman who's probably not gonna make a huge impact right away. I don't know if we have two, especially when well, now we already have four or five interior D linemen. True that. Okay. So yeah, not not willing to jump up for that or, or worry about those. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Jaheim Bell, tight end. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm down to clown on the trade if you want. Yeah, let's do it. Now I'm adding a pick, Roy. <laughs> and we still have 144, so we're not even like moving back there and not having anything between. Lucky Irving. Yeah, I think we're good on trades right now, buddy. 144 to 156. Jeez, these guys are throwing everything at us. That's right. All right. So on the board, Will Shipley, Brendan Rice, Theo Johnson, tight end Penn State. I don't know much about him. Uh, Jerry really Jones, cornerback from uh, Florida State. Uh, Tyler Davis, Jordan Jefferson. Uh, center, Boat Limmer from Arkansas is an interesting one. Uh, then uh, Isaiah Adams, guard from Illinois. What are you thinking about? Center would be interesting. I don't think it's a, a bad move. Um, if we piss off Conor McGovern. 
Yeah, I mean, McGovern is supposed to slot in, uh, play center. Um, he's done that in the past, so um, I don't think it piss him off, though. Izzy might have froze, or did I freeze? Are we back? Yes, we're back. Okay. Yeah, you're back. I was like, did I freeze? Did Izzy freeze? Yeah, I don't know why that happened, because I got fiber optic and a mesh network, so that's crazy. But all right, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. I was looking to see what the hell's going on. Oh, my God, you traded with Miami Treader. <laughs> and I'm going to do those picks better than they ever could. How about that? Yeah, just think when we hit a pro bowler with their pick, it'll be even sweeter. Yep. And they, I don't care what they took, but I don't care. All right. So, uh, pick 144. What you thinking? I wouldn't be mad at center. Okay. I really wouldn't. Give us a little bit of depth there. Um, mm -hmm. I know last year, you know, McGovern was our break glass in case of emergency center. I don't know who yep. that would be this year. So, someone who can. Play that position, you know, definitely not a bad thing. It'd be Will, it'd be Will Clapp. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot we signed him. Yep. Uh, but so the, the two guys on the board are sticking out to – three guys are sticking out to me are Bo Limmer, Jordan Jefferson, and Brendan Rice. Uh, I like Brendan yeah. Rice, too. You put up okay. some pretty pretty decent numbers. USC's offense, USC's offense, obviously very wide receiver-centric, but yep. he's so pretty solid. What did you say? You think in the center or you thinking of the receiver? I'd rather go receiver. I completely forgot we had Will Clapp. So, yeah, oh, let's go receiver. Sure. Okay. All right. I don't know much about Will Clapp, but, yeah. He that, that started, a, started a bit last year for the Chargers. Um, it's not saying a lot. That's, that's a good point. But, hey, it's a great name, too. Very memeable name. Yeah. Will Clapp for food. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're good with one trades for now, buddy. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Be here all night. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jordan Jefferson still on the board. Uh, running back Isaiah Davis. We took a running back. We took two safeties. Yeah, I was gonna say we already took a running back, but I do like Isaiah Davis. I'm not saying we take him by any means, but if we hadn't had already taken a running back, he would be a prospect I'd be interested in. So we have five more picks. What are you what are you seeing? Another safety might not be the worst idea. Can well, never Pecky, have enough offensive linemen. Pecky Smith is a average sized guy. Um linebacker. You know, we haven't we haven't seen many of those. Yeah. Corner. Don't hate corner either. I don't hate corner either, yeah. Let's go to all big board. Okay. Jordan Jefferson. Uh Tyrese Price, or Knight, excuse me, uh, Isaiah Davis, Tyke Smith, Keaton Oladapo, more of like a nickel box type safety, yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith Randolph Jr., Justin Boigby from Alabama is a defensive tackle I like. Yeah, he's, not, yeah. he's not big, though, so I wouldn't consider him because he's, uh, he's, he's the three technique, right? So if I was going to take a defensive tackle here, it would be Jordan Jefferson because he's a one tech. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good value here. I wouldn't be mad at it, you know, getting a guy who a lot of people have slotted going in the third or earlier in the fourth at 158. Like, I don't, I don't think that's a bad move. Okay, we'll take him real quick, and then we pick two picks later. So, Perfect. Keep pick, Tyrese Nice or Knight. You guys are just throwing us your whole damn draft, Houston. Relax. That's right. I don't, I don't have enough room for all these draft picks. All right, so – Corner, you said uh, Daquan Hardy from Penn State's on the board. Uh, Luke McCaffrey's here, a safety. Um, Aaron Casey, linebacker from Indiana. I don't know anything about him. I don't either, to be honest. Yeah, safety or corner, no, more, some more secondary help. I, I could see being the move. Let's take the corner, Daquan Hardy. Let me look at yeah. his profile real quick. Before. 5'9", 179, he's a little small. Probably a slot guy. We could use him as a slot behind Taron. Right. Decent decent RAF score. Yep. All right. Hardy it is. Uh, 
Now we have a little time. Yeah. We'll stop at 170, see if there's anybody on the board that we want to have to jump at. Xavier Thomas would have been the guy I wanted to jump for. Have we taken an edge? Yeah. Or Jay Lux Hunt? We we took your, yeah, we took your guy to Houston Christian. Okay, okay. All right, prospects on the board. Wide receiver who's out there. Juan Jackson. Anthony Gold. I love gold. Is our guy still there? Ah, uh, he had to go. Okay. Big board it is. At this point, we've already picked up all our needs, right? We got we got two yeah. wide receivers and, and, and McConkie and Rice. We got two defensive tackles, one technique and three technique. We yeah. got defensive end. We got two safeties and a corner. At this point, whatever the hell is best on the board probably, right? Yeah, best available. Maybe a lineman. Can never have enough linemen. Okay, so we're not we're not we're gonna move up. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think there's anybody worth move, moving up for at the moment. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, the only one I see that probably worthy of moving up for is Javion uh, Javion Cohen from Miami, offensive guard, but he might make it. The Evan Williams, MJ Devonshire, I like him. Nope, he didn't make it. Oh yeah, he's still there. Cohen's still there. So, yeah, let's do it. Cohen? Yeah, I think so. All right, interior offensive line. Let's go. Ah, Christian Boyd, Northern Iowa. I like him, but we already have two defensive tackles. Ooh, if he's there when we pick again, Maurice Liafu or Liafau. Yeah, I like him too. Mm -hmm. He's a big linebacker. Yeah, he can hit. Mm -hmm. you, you put him in the middle on rundowns <laughs> and somebody's day pretty quick. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I paused it for some reason on accident. All right, so we haven't taken a linebacker. There's one right there. Uh, Eric All, tight end for Iowa. I like him. Back from Iowa. I like him. Northern Iowa. Iowa, yeah. Iowa knows about their tight ends. Yes, they do. They do. If, tight ends tight and corners. End. That's Iowa football. If we don't score, we kick it real far. All right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, let's see. Dallin Holker, tight end from Colorado State. I've seen him play. He's all right. I would be thinking? surprised if we took a tight end, unless we just want some, like, competition for Quentin Morris. But that, well, We're in the sixth round, so that's what, this, that's what this would be, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, the linebacker is there. Yeah, we haven't gone linebacker. All right, let's Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't hate it. This, I mean, six-round linebacker. Right. You know, no one's he, he no makes, one's losing their job. No one's offended. <laughs> right. He makes the team good for him. I think he will. You know, like we only have like five linebackers on the roster right now, right? We got Milano, for, uh, Bernard. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Mora, Williams, and Specter. Yep. I got stuck on Specter's name. I was like, I love saying his name. Specter played pretty well last year, like when he had to, like. From going in like pretty much, you know, off the off the injured list to playing the whole Miami game, yeah. I was pleasantly surprised by him. Like then he got hurt against the Steelers, and who would have thought that would be a big deal? But yeah, yeah. he he played well. When his number was called, which is all you can ask for. So I uh, see. Um, need a nickel. So I drafted a nickel right here. Daquan Hardy, Penn State at one sixty. We got one already. I don't know if I missed that comment or. James Williams from Miami safety. Okay, let's see. I think I think he's listed at linebacker in this. James Williams, if he's still on the board. Nah, he's definitely gone. I do like James Williams, but yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move this along. All right, we are at our next pick at two hundred. All right. What are you thinking? Wouldn't hate another safety. Wouldn't um, hate another safety. So Trey Taylor or Thomas Harper. Couple that I don't know a whole lot about either one of them, to be honest with you. Um, so I like that rascal. That's a yeah, you know, military man like yourself. You know, could could be the move. My son's gonna gonna join the Air Force when he. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. 
I told him no army. But <laughs> chew your spit out and not care. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Harper more looks like he's more of a nickelback size safety. Yeah, let's go, you know, let's go with our airman. All right, airman. Trey Taylor. Drafted to the Buffalo Bills. Welcome. He's, he's, he's probably a hitter. I have to look at some film on him after this. But. Definitely a run stopper. Mm -hmm. So that size, a safety, okay, because he played at Air Force. So they played all those military schools, Navy, Army. Yeah, and then they're in the Mountain West, and the Mountain West is you know, a pretty decent conference. A lot, a lot of running, yeah. A lot of, a lot yeah, of oh yeah, Army, Navy, Air, they have to because they can't have big enough linemen because they don't they, they don't fit the standards. So they have to have right. to have small linemen run the option. <laughs> they run the damn beer. <laughs> yes. Right. All right, I think we're out of picks. But we're just waiting for the yeah. to finish. I think we are too. We had a uh... while wow, the Jets have the last three picks. Three Mr. Irrelevant is going to the irrelevant Jets. That's right. Austin Reed went to the Rams. Okay. This is our hall. 12 players. Let's see where we're going. I like it. Good going, Izzy. Now we're stuck with Matt Hawk. You're forgetting about UDFAs, buddy. All right. So, McConkey or Rororo, Kalen Bullock, Jennings Hunt. That would be a dream. Those, yeah. first four, that, those four right there. To me, that's a dream. Yeah. Addressing all of your needs, like your, your big time needs up front, the first three picks or four picks. Yep. And not giving up any picks, getting picks back. Yeah. Yeah. Just moving whenever you felt like it, basically. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Hicks from uh, from Washington State. Awesome pick up there to be our, our, another safety in the in the room. Because I don't I don't know if Demar Hamlin makes his team. I don't either. I. Was very unsure if they were going to cut him last year, but kind of felt like he couldn't cut him last year. So, yeah, I don't know if he makes the team either. He didn't. He didn't play much last year, and when he did, it was average at best. And if they can get younger at safety with four years of team control instead of a guy with a one year of team control, yeah, I think they probably probably Demar's the odd man out over a rookie if all things are equal. Yep, and if you bring in two rookies, like. Bye bye, buddy. I, I like my handling personality, but on the field is a different thing, right? Yeah, like just similar to Tre'Davious White. You hate to yep. see him go because of what he's been through, but at the same time, you want to win. Yeah, so, yeah. gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not trying to be asympathetic towards him. Just the play wasn't there. That fake punt would have been cool, though. Yeah. Oh, if he if he got the first down, man, listen. Yeah, the Chiefs didn't follow the script. They're supposed to let him get that one, dude. Like if that play should have gone to Ty Johnson, who also plays special teams, give it to a running back, or they should have just punted it. But he looked, he looked confused out there. He was just, I don't... yeah, it was, don't need to bring up too many bad memories. I think it was like a check with me type thing because the Chiefs only had ten guys out there, and oh, so. mm -hmm. All right, and Ray Davis getting a nice hammer of a running back. Yeah. He's got speed and, had, and played very well in the SEC. So good yeah. SEC running back, Brandon, Brandon Rice, who a lot of people have in the second or third round. I see him kind of slipping into the third or fourth round area, which is where we got him. Uh, another defensive tackle, Justin Jefferson. So we got one and a three. That Daquan Hardy, undersized corner, Penn State, probably a nickel. Jovion or Javion Cohen, interior offensive lineman, to add to that room. And then – uh, linebacker Maris Liafu or Liafau, and another safety, you know, basically throwing crap at the wall, hoping it stinks. Right, I think, I think this is a good haul. Yeah, I like it. I would be pleased if this happens next weekend. I think got some good depth guys at positions we need it, got younger, got cheaper, makes some guys with like we we're talking guys like Demar Hamlin with one year left on their deal, maybe a bit more expendable. Replace them with someone four years of team control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd be pleased if if the board fell this way. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have this many picks and we didn't get the last guy. Still, two safeties. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that basically concludes our show. Thanks for having me. This was fun. 
dude, it, it was a blast, and you know, it's it's my my pleasure and my privilege to have you, uh, guys. Check out Scott. Scott, go ahead and plug your uh, your stuff, man. Yeah, um, new ish to Built in Buffalo. Started blogging with them this past season. Do a decent amount of gambling content during the season for any other degenerates out there like me. Um, my my, tw- my ex or my Twitter uh, s underscore casting fourteen. Uh, give it a follow. I try to interact on there, and I'll be uh, posting more stuff now that we're getting closer to the season. And appreciate Izzy for having me on, and hoping to do some more shows going forward. No problem, dude. Anytime you want to come on, let me know. I'm I'm always open to having guests. I just don't. Yeah. Care. It feels like I'm <laughs> asking somebody for a favor if I ask for a guest. And I'm a, I'm actually kind of a loner anyway, but yeah, it's gonna be a blast uh, this week watching the draft and just seeing how it really falls, man. Really, this is my last mock draft, and then next week I have my Sunday show. So if you want to come again after the draft, you're welcome because it's the day after the draft. Yeah. And, uh, we've been talking about this for – we've been talking – the drafts, like, you know, you talk about it basically since the, the day after the Super Bowl, and then you get to the point where it's like, all right, I am I need to see it unfold. You only do so many mock drafts. Like, you, yep. need, you, need, to, you need to get there. Um, I'm, I'm pumped. It's going to be – it's going to be fun. It's always a fun three days of football. The NFL is king of taking over the whole year, not just its season, and the draft is their, their biggest event for that. It's like the WrestleMania. You know, <laughs> That's the- right. You know the Super Bowls, like the Super Bowl, but like, the draft seems like it's almost, you know, getting that big. Yeah, and they're moving it around, which is cool. Like Detroit, gonna be a cool venue. Like when they had it in Nashville, that looked like a hell of a time. So um, it's cool that they're not just doing it in Radio City Music Hall anymore. I think it's a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more fun. It gives some other cities a shot. I, it'd be nice to visit it in Buffalo one day. That'd be pretty cool. But, yeah, uh, I, I don't see why not. You know, maybe yeah. something with the new stadium, could do it on the waterfront, do it on Chippewa Street, get the people out. The um, yeah. Place, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, I forget this place I went to, Buffalo Waterworks or something like that? I think that's a place. I don't live there either, so I think I think uh, it's a place. I went there and I met some of the Bills Mafia babies. They were doing like a charity thing there. Um, it was fun. I met, I met the Kristen from, from them. I guess she's one of the people in charge of that group, I guess. But yeah. Very, very nice place. Uh, had a few drinks and you know people on the Buffalo River just driving their boats and I was like that's cool man yeah the Niagara Falls there's no one. David Highland was there right there if you could put something together at Niagara Falls that'd be awesome yeah yeah dude the draft moving around I think really an idea by the NFL you get to see all the cities you know we did it, did it in Philly you did it in Chicago you did it in Detroit yeah they did Cleveland which was cool you know kind of right. like the Hall of Fame Hall of Fame vibe yeah like it's some spots that like like Detroit. Or I know they had a Super Bowl, but probably not getting a Super Bowl anytime soon. Yep. Cleveland, Buffalo, not getting the Super Bowl. It's too cold outdoor stadiums. Like, give them the draft. Like, make them the center of the NFL universe for three days uh, yep. when it's a little warmer out. It's not February. Um, yeah, I think a draft in Buffalo would be a lot of fun. It would be a blast. I, I'd, I'd have to go back to Buffalo just for it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But, guys, you guys don't know where to catch my guy Scott. You guys know me every week this time. 7 o'clock. Next week's going to be actually earlier, probably around 3, because I got tickets to go see Burke Kreischer with the wife. Hey, and nice. So, yeah, going to go, go see some comedy. And, yeah, so you guys all be blessed. Love all you guys. Behave yourselves, most of all. And uh, go Bills. Yes, sir. There we go. Peace.